And there we are. Hey, welcome to Opus Live from the stairwell <laughs> at Canvas Culture Headquarters. <laughs> and uh, we, I'd love to be able to show them around. Yeah, well, we, we, the, uh... well, we'll give you a show around where we are in a minute. Uh, <laughs> turns out that Pot TV is on the move. Yeah, that's right. Um, we're going to be moving into a really big new space down on the second floor. We're going to have, well, we're going to be able to do more stuff in the near future. So It's a big, huge space. We're actually going to be able to set it up with the Vapor Lounge in the background if we so choose. Also, we'll have a lot more studio space against the wall. We can have different backdrops. <coughs> Just a lot more space to play with. Then you guys can't make fun of our hot TV studio closet anymore. Yeah, we'll be able to actually do PowerPoint on the wall That's and project good. stuff up we and can. all kinds of stuff. But it's gonna we, we got even a room for an in-house band off we, to the side. Do. You know we that we could even have a cut. We could put some couches. Paul in. Schaefer will oh be yeah, us. it's uh, <laughs> endless possibilities. Here, I'm just gonna do this here for a second. I'll show you what's going on. Oh, they're doing some moving. There's Lewis. <laughs> the boys are moving heavily. Show them the rest of the whole area, Mallow Levine's area here. This is the staircase at uh, the Canvas Culture Headquarters coming up to the Vapor Lounge on the third floor. And this is all part of yeah, David Malmo Levine's photographic history of cannabis prohibition and activism, as a matter of actually. And if the history, and you'll start down at the entrance to uh, Pot TV, or to the building, when you come up the stairs, it's in chronological order. This might need to go back up. There you go, it looks pretty good. Are we okay still? I think you're perfect. Okay, still. Well, yeah, looks there good. We go. Perfect. We're still good. Nice. So, uh, yeah, that's what's going on. That's why we're sitting in the stairwell with, uh, I'm using a tote. As a desk case. <laughs> yeah, pieces of furniture left and right yeah. strewn all over the place. We cobbled together the show from the hallway. <laughs> I demanded I was able to do my show. I said, no, no, we can't shut down Pod TV now. That's There's right. no way. And actually, we kind of wanted to do it in the corner, stashed up here for you guys. We could probably have set up in our new studio already if we really wanted to, but because it wasn't glorious and all... The time exactly was short. Wanted, time was yeah, short. We decided to do it on the fly in the... Corner, as we That's we're like right. dunces. We need dunce caps. Yeah, we're being punished. Yeah, <laughs> this is the punishment show. <laughs> well, we'll be rewarded with our new studio downstairs. Very That's nice. right. It's going to be great. And uh, the part that excites me is that we'll actually be able to incorporate the vapor lounge into it as well. I like seeing the lounge in the background and people coming and going. We do have beautiful windows that go out onto the street as well, with uh, and the park across the street. So we'll be able to show you guys a little bit more. And it also might be, uh, as they do at Vapor Central, easier to solicit um, people to come up to a third mic and comment on some of the things that yeah. we're talking about. So it'll be more interactive that way. Yeah, uh, that's we're, what I like about it. I'd like to incorporate the people who come down here a little bit more. And it's cool you can see the people in the lounge popping down. Kind of well, see what we actually do here in the building. It's a little deceiving when we're shooting all our episodes in our little closet. Private office. Yeah, because it, this place is big and beautiful and there's a lot going on here, so we need to showcase that a little bit more often. When I used to say that we were coming to you from Paw TV's palatial penthouse studios, I was being sarcastic. <laughs> he wasn't joking, no, no because I, the, real, the real studio is out here. Yeah, that, yeah house. but it won't be the penthouse. Yeah, yeah exactly. The second floor, pal true. palatial Paw TV studios. That's true, it's now second. Here at Mark Emery's Canvas Culture Headquarters <laughs> in beautiful downtown Vansterdam. Hey, all right, so I'm looking at the chat. Uh, I'm going to actually. Who's all out in chat? Hey, here. Yoda, good to see Yoda's you here. There. We're going to be uh, showing up your book here in a minute. That's right. Absolutely. I'm just getting this joint you. rolled because I need one. And hey, you want to do a bong rip? I would love to do a bong rip. There you go. Grab some weed <laughs> and get printed. There's Marijuana seat. Man going up and down the stairs. There he is. Here comes Jody. In the mad pack. rush. Look at this. She's packing heavy. Yeah, she's got a table in her hand. Here. A tabletop or some piece, of a, piece of a desk. <laughs> Dismantling our offices downstairs. Yeah. Jody and I share an office downstairs, and now we're bringing all that up into our Pot TV space. It's going to be our new Cannabis Culture Pot TV office, 
And uh, yeah, it'll but be it'll a just bit be nice a, it, centralized. It'll mostly be administration. Although I think Greg will do his show probably from his desk. Yeah, he's probably still do the show from that. But uh, other Which than that, cool. the st What's actual that? studio will be downstairs. I'll be doing my show probably from the downstairs studio uh, in future. I'll definitely be doing mine from down there. Yeah, me, I, as well. It's just nicer now. I like having a bit of elbow room. <laughs> That's right. I need to load this up, actually. If, uh, is that the Burmese? That's the Burmese, Burmese my friend. Burmese? Go for it. We're still about six weeks away from uh, any at least of any kind of blueberry jam. So. Is that Rose? There she Hi, is. Hi, Rose. Yes. Hello there. We're I'd filming live like... in our corner over here. <laughs> yes. Right. I also like to mention that uh, the beautiful Kimberly, my girlfriend, is here in the hallway with us. That's right. Sitting, she can wave at you there. It out, there she is. Out. <laughs> nice. And All actually, right. yeah, this is uh, the entrance to Tina's office. That we're... Oh, and actually, if you open that door up, can yeah. you show them what's out the door? I don't know, maybe, can you move the camera a little bit over that direction? That way. Yeah, like that. That actually goes right into our upstairs paper lounge. You can see the edge of a pool table there. <laughs> I was going to say, that's a pool area and uh, and more more uh, volcanoes in, along the windows over there. Nice yeah. place to sit and look down from the third floor at the traffic and wail on the volcano and sit in the nice sun. It's just beautiful here today in beautiful Vancouver. It's uh, I think it's about 27 degrees out there right now. Just another stellar day on the west coast here in September. Yeah. We're going to um, close this now again. We'll yes, people on. are asking, so a new CCN Live this Friday, new studio? That is correct. We'll be in our new studio this Friday. And uh, it's, I on our show, it's not really probably going to look too much different. I think we'll probably use the background as our... We'll mix it up for you guys. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you gotta go. Yeah, keep, going, you go. Keep, going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep yeah, going. Yeah, we definitely won't shoot my keep show going. from this little area here in the hallway. <laughs> yeah, you're going the right way. No, no, you're going the right way. You, yeah. were, going, you were doing it right. This, keep going that way. Yeah, there you go. And now I got a bomb going. rip. Keep going, keep going. Like a good, take a good one. A good one. There a little more, a little more, a little more, a little, little more. Right there. That's perfect. That's good. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah, because there's lag. <laughs> yeah, there's the lag. <laughs> Forgot Might be a little lag. too far now. You're going to come back just a teeny pinch. And just leave it there. Yeah, there you go. We're good. That's actually a good shot. You get the whole bong in there right now. Oh, yeah. So, we're still going to somewhat stick to the program if we can. Yeah. Man, we've been kicked out of uh, where we're doing it for the hallway. Doing our hallway On the fly. Show. We cobbled together a show. Taylor, from, you know, Big to BC, lovely. Uh, Long tender from, from Volcano Lounge is here. Yeah. Loving it. There you go. Loving it. She just thinks it's, we're styling here in the hallway. Bomb rip? You can come and take a bomb rip. Come around. Come around go this side. Go around. Yeah, yeah, here. I'll load one up for you. Here. Awesome. This is a great book out that I got my uh, personal autograph copy sent to me by Yoda. Thank you very, very much. And got one too. Thank you very much. I think, yeah, a bunch of the men came to a. A number of uh, of us, Pot TV, uh, Canvas Culture folks. Gotcha. And this is it. Yeah. There we go. Here, I'll move and you can come in the shot. There's a huge pile of stuff coming up the stairs that you can probably hear. And uh, Medical Growing, a Garden Apiece, Daniel Bogan, forward by Joseph Petrie. Joseph R. Petrie. One of the things that uh, I have not had a chance to really read it cover to cover like I try to do on most of books that I've got on marijuana growing at some point. Yeah. I have, uh, right on, that was Taylor having a bong rip. Be accurate. Awesome, Taylor. You don't have to come on the camera. Would you like a bong rip? No, I just asked her. Oh, okay. So, uh... One of the nicest things about this book, you'll notice it's not a great big thick volume like uh, some of the other books out there like uh, Jorge Cervantes' uh, books or, uh, well, the original one by Mel Frank, Ed Rosenthal, The Marijuana Growers Guide, yeah. and, and there's a lot out there. And usually you're looking at books like 250 to 400 pages. Yeah. This one, I mean, including uh, the web... 
webliography <laughs> and uh, and and lots of room in the in for writing down your tips like and of the weeks and day tasks and things for making notes is still under 100 pages. Yeah. So um, it's basically taken all of the highly technical growing information and can dense a lot of that unnecessary stuff down to make it simple for a beginner grower. So a new grower or somebody just getting in, say um, even somebody who's never uh, even used marijuana and they're getting into it because of medical necessity, I think this would be a great book for them. Uh, let's go. I had some... What are you laughing? Yeah. Oh, I see. You're at Kimberly's being our live Special smoke effects. machine. Yeah. So I mean, here's here's interesting. There's like one full page just dedicated to spider mites, um, which has some excellent information in it. The best thing is not to get them and have safe gardening practices where you don't get spider mites. Oh, here. There you go. And there was, what else are we looking at? There was something I don't know because I got these bookmarks. Oh, you put your marks in there. Yeah, I got bookmarks right. in here. So you made notes. I, well, no, I didn't make notes. I just put in bookmarks because <laughs> to remember what uh, I was looking for. Well, this is an interesting, and I thought this would be both of these chapters. Again, we're very good. Legalization models and concerns. And here we have, that's one page, and another page devoted right beside it to cannabis and its place in society. Um, he's got a couple paragraphs here, about four paragraphs. Are we setting a good example for our kids? The title. He's got a great, great line up here. Do you want to read out some of these successful and historical tokers? Ah, uh, yes, yeah, successful and historical tokers. George Washington, Bing Crosby, Thomas Jefferson. Benjamin Franklin, Bill Gates, Bill Gates, Barack Obama, Woody Harrelson, Johnny Picasso, Depp, Picasso, Churchill, Clinton, Bob Marley, Bill that is, Don Wells, John Lennon, Ray Charles, Robert Mitchum, Steve Martin, Johnny Depp, Snoop Dogg of course, Burt Reynolds, Bruce Lee, Louis Armstrong, Bob Hope, Salvador Dali, yeah. Bill Murray's on the list, Bill Maher, Kurt Milton Tutin. Burl, Mark Emery. Jeez, Mark's on the list. Ross Rabliati, Sir Richard Branson, Queen Victoria, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the christened one. Is that Dana Larson's name I saw in there? Holy anointing, well, Oliver Stone, James Fonda, Mr. Bill Shakespeare. And this is a very, fun. believe it or not, out of that whole paragraph, there's tons more in there. That's a really short list. There's The list is oh, yeah. endless of successful people. I mean, just think of most musicians. Yeah. That most there's music a, you like. There's a great website by a regular contributor to Cannabis Culture, Ellen Comp, and it's called VeryImportantPotheads.com. Here, I'll, I'll actually get the uh, website address up. Very important potheads. Can't remember if it's .org or it's .com. Very important potheads .com. I'll put that in the chat as well. Tons of people, many, many, many famous people who use marijuana yeah. and have supported it. Yeah, and uh, I don't even know if he's in there, but one of my heroes, George Carlin. Yeah. There's another one. I know Yoda's in here. He's laughing. He says, "Yeah, it's a short list. Yeah, it is." But I, I mean, if you you'd need a whole book, a oh, separate yeah. book to list. You know. We could all sit around a table smoking pot. We could sit here for hours and play the game. Okay, your turn. List another one. And my God, we would never go over the same person twice. There's just too many. Yeah, I haven't so. had a, a chance to really go through this book, um, or even really have much time to look at it at all. But one thing I do notice about it is the public the publication job itself is very nice. The pages are there's a lot of color in here. Some of these pictures look very good. It could show some of the law. Actually, I was going to. I think we got yeah. something back here. No, this is some beautiful shots in there. Here's some. Uh, Oops. It's got some great close-up pictures here, and I mentioned the spider mites. And there's some good information there. And that's not going to do real justice, but these are actually excellent uh, macro shots. Yeah, it's hard to see them. Yeah, but they came out very well in the in the publication. Uh, <coughs> it's got the flowering stage, harvesting. I'm glad to see uh, a page fully devoted to trichomes and another one uh, just on curing and storage. So it, uh, it's methods on trimming. It's he's condensed down all the 
technical stuff that you don't need to know to start a medical garden. And I think, you know, and that's part of it, what's in the title. You know, a medical garden, a, a garden of peace. So, I may be wrong, Yoda, but is, are you kind of, I'm thinking you might have been developing this book or, you know, wrote this book targeting, you know, the first time or the beginner med growers, it seems to me. The bottom, that's it. It's seed breeding part. That's I right. made the seeds they sent you. That's right, too. And I wanted to mention that as well. I got some, uh, now I know Matt Murnau loves the strain Yoda. He grows it out and he is often, I've seen on his show, uh, it going on about what great weed it is oh, and yeah, how, um, about the how the benefits medically, how it's helping him. So uh, I was lucky enough to be the recipient of some of these seeds as well. And I, like I say, I've just got the blueberry jam growing out now and I'm pulling down a harvest in a couple weeks of Burmese. So I'm making room for, you know, it's in rotation. Like those seeds, the Yoda and as well as the Hayoma from House of the Great Gardener in down South Island. We know who that is, our friend, uh, and that's actually hey, Omo. That's that's my phone. That is. Yes, okay. that's my phone. Just a minute. It's the hotline. It's the hallway hotline. Hello. So, this hallway. It's funny that we're sitting in the hallway. Oh, Sean. Hi, Nancy. Because uh, I actually have a little historical tidbit about hallways themselves. Okay, leave it by it used desk, to be and that I will. You know, the hallway now is kind of like the, Perfect. the room in between rooms. All right, and I will like be dropping. I, but no worries, I'll be dropping another one off real is quick. Is the room where everybody hangs out? I, it was more like the living room the toy area the thing because the, it was the, the hall, room. and it was the big. You know, where they would have. Okay, thanks. Bye now. They would have shows and they would have performances, and you know, a king or whoever or a nobleman or something would entertain his guests there. So I'm talking about hallways. Since we're doing the show in a hallway, you know, hallways now are just the connecting path. They've been relegated to the sort of in-between room. Yeah, we don't have the great hall. Yeah, the hall was the, like, great place, though, to be back well, in the day. Now we talk about a hall for getting a dance. Yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. We, we rent, you rent a hall. Well, it's the same deal. Yeah. Right? The hall was, like, the place where everybody liked to hang, so I like the hallway. Yeah, I'm Hallways rock. Oh, okay. We're okay. I didn't want to miss 420 in Alberta. Right, my clock is fast by about three or four minutes here. Okay, so. so yeah, no, I think I got you got four minutes. I got for me, it would be four minutes would be the time. Right, I'll take out the iPhone. That's right, four minutes. There you go. All right. So. Um, oh, I just like to mention uh, Parliament's back oh, here yeah. in Canada. We got the uh, our politicians. Are yeah. uh, sitting That's back, not. are back from their summer holidays, from their whatever 14 week summer holidays. That's something that they get. That's right. Yeah. I don't know. They get like way, I don't know who else gets 14 weeks in the summer, but you know. Uh, I know who gets I think longer. they get. I think they get off in May and they don't come back till now. The or BC something. government gets an even longer one. Oh, well, those guys are just. Yeah, well, have you heard about this though? Uh, Could you imagine if they tried to do that federally and run the country by not showing up? Yeah, we, we wouldn't stand for oh, it. So you no, heard no. about Christy Clark's move here in the province then? What was that? Okay, so the parliament will be coming back. In or the legislature? Ottawa. Oh, in Ottawa. In Ottawa. Yeah, in Ottawa. But it's... here in British Columbia, our legislature in Victoria will not be returning for the fall session because Christy Clark, the premier of British Columbia, has canceled the fall session completely. Oh, so she's total chicken shit. She just completely Chris... canceled the government. For the, until February of 2013. Well, so we have a vote. Feb 2013 and, 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 is the next time we'll see the government and, and sit. Next time they sit, and then we have a, an election in May. Yes, exactly. And an election in May of 2013. Yeah. She is a chicken shit. That's what it so is. So three months before we have an election, she's going to have to sit the government. I wonder how many toy. I wonder how many uh, goodies we're going to get. She said Because you know she's going to sit the government and lay on thick. Here's the budget. We're going to up this, up that. I wonder well, how much money they'll give down. up. Oh, they know. Their, their ship is sinking. They're, they'll be lucky if they get three seats. Yeah, I guarantee. Well, I, especially I, after this move. Oh yeah, I guarantee. Yeah. I right now I'm gonna put. You heard it here first. I'm gonna oh, make a prediction. Okay. I'm making a prediction. Yeah. The liberals get three seats <laughs> in the new and when they after, it, after the election in May. And it's all gonna be NDP years. And now they have this conservative provincial party. Yeah, well those guys are in hot water. Dude, the leader was almost asked to step down, like his internal from the internal provincial conservative party. 
they hate the I forget the guy whose name who leads it. Uh, yeah, I'm not. The, all of the people like the in the conservative party of the province don't want him. Lead. I saw it in really? print somewhere. Yeah, I'll story find on out. it. Yeah, I they don't. They don't I want him. Familiarize myself with provincial politics. I've been. Well, this guy's new. This is all new, so we don't hear too much yet. Yeah. But we'll probably hear more of this guy now because of Christie's move. Yeah. He'll probably be out there. But oh, yeah. again, because he's got a lot of flack internally, he might be laying low, which is why we're not hearing about him. I've heard there's a lot of liberal defectors who are leaving the party and going elsewhere. I don't know if they're going to the conservatives or what, but I yeah. actually, I'm happy that there is a conservative party coming into the province because that will further split the liberals up. And I'm an NDP here myself. I, per, I definitely would prefer them over any of the other parties. Uh, I don't really like everything they do either, but at least they're the best of the, they're the lesser of all the evils, let's say, sadly. That's the way it has to be. And I'd also like to point out, we're shooting here in the hallway with natural light from the skylights. We don't even have any lights set up or anything today. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need any. We have hey. a beautiful skylight. Happy 420 in Alberta. Woohoo! Calgary, Edmonton, and uh, other places in that time zone. Happy 420. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. So uh, one of the things I did see uh, briefly, I didn't get to read the story, but in the Globe and Mail today, uh, what we can expect from the Harper Conservatives uh, in the upcoming uh, sitting here in the fall, and is they are bringing in another omnibus budget bill, and this one is actually, I think I think I read 400 pages more. Than the one that they just brought in before they went on recess, which was excessively long, and opposition was trying to vote on it section by section to prolong the vote and stall they are crazy. when they went through with it, um, which is one of the few tactics they can really do because of they don't have the numbers to, to beat these guys. So, you know, but th this is something to be expected. So you think they cut a lot of services like and things like environmental... Uh, uh, for things that protect the environment, like regulations, environmental regulations, they want to make it easier to do all these rape the land, basically, yep. and sell out our resources to foreign investment, which is yep. what it read between the lines. Yeah, set everything that the country owned, everything that the people owned, everything we own is being yeah sold off to the lowest bidder, basically. It's really because they have they look at they go, oh lowest. this will this will be good hard paying jobs for Canadians, but in fact it's because they have no other options. They have no other plans to put the country to work other than to sell us out. That's the only way they can get us to work. Or get us out of like red or avoid us going, you know, into a recession and having like our you know, country go to shit. Yeah. So instead of uh, coming out admitting that we're in a hard place and coming out with concrete things, Canadian solutions that in Canada they're selling us out. And that's what it boils down to. Well, and they have been for a long time. Well, that's not just that either. Uh, liberals do a lot of it too. Oh. Canada is the only country in the world that allows foreign ownership of its natural resources. Look it up. This is this is old news. And. But it's, it's been like that for as long as 20 years. We're the only country in the world that allows it. Other countries will allow you to come in and extract resources at a fee. You don't own them. They own them. They retain ownership all the way down the line of those resources and get money back. Well, and that's how it should be because yeah. if you... And the, and the people extracting them, they take percentage. It's the opposite in Canada. They come in and give us a percentage and take it all. And the bulk of the profits go to them. Not to us. Yeah. And it's the wrong thing. It's the, we're the only ones in the world. Well, and you Nobody know else is. does that. It's because the U.S. wants all our stuff. And we have yeah. a lot of it. That's part we of it. We have so many natural part resources it, yeah. and so much of each one that it's just a gold mine. But we're, but we're starting to realize it's not infinite. It's not an infinite supply. We need to start, like water, for instance, is a, around the world is becoming a, a more and more precious commodity because it, there's less and less of it every year. Yeah. Much of it gets polluted and spoiled, so it's unusable. Yeah. Water. It doesn't get replaced. There's only so much water in the hydrology system. Yeah. You know, as far as that whole well, rainwater, you know. Canadian water is well, very clean. Part of that also is to do with the um, our rock structure and things like that, and the and the karst that where water, which acts as natural filtration systems in the ground. Yeah, that helps. The that's part of the reason too is due to the minerals and things like that in our uh, 
in the geological makeup of the, the land. Yeah. Um, I, oh, I see. We're not actually. I see. You got to cut that way. I, I'm looking and thinking we're cut down, but we're not. Oh no! Uh, yeah, you see I what see. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. I, I looked. I looked over here. here. I'm looking at your screen. I looked at yeah. mine, and I'm going, "Okay, we're cool." <laughs> yeah, for sure. Wow, I'm feeling really good now. I'm feeling pretty high. Well, you got some most of real weed. <laughs> yeah, that was my first real weed of the day, actually. He, yeah, he show. came in. He goes, "Well, I haven't smoked any real." I said, "Let's get high." I go, "Well, it's okay, sure." He goes, "I haven't smoked any real weed today. Whatever that meant." I was like, we need real weed. Because I've been smoking roaches since this morning because I've run out of real pot. Uh, so I had a bunch of roaches sitting around. But, of course, when I smoke roaches, I'll load them into the bong, and I put a bunch of keep on top of them, a big pile of keep. Well, that'll so, lay it out a little easier. It's not real weed, but it's the hash and roaches together, whatever that is. Should have a name for that. Well, I call when I put... Call like, it cupcake. I've actually... Well, there you go. I, I actually do a bowl of weed sometimes, and I'll put a pinch of keep on top. And I call it icing on the cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That's what it is. You know, first toke, look out, wham. Yeah. Yeah, here, take this. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those. Do we have an ashtray yeah. here? Oh, yeah, there's one there. It's especially, I mean, it's especially strong when you have these dirty roaches that you're smoking, though. And then the keep on top of it, it's like a oh, yeah. smack, because you got all the, like, cake resins that you're not really supposed to ingest, and then the good stuff, the keep itself. So. <laughs> the second round, the second generation joints and stuff. I like second generation, third generation. They just taste so disgusting. But, yeah. You know what I just noticed, actually? On the wall, when I mentioned earlier, as it's in chronological order, I just noticed yeah. there's years. Yeah, there is, yeah. There's actually tags. Like, I see 1970s, 1980s, 1990s. So, actually, as well, when you're coming up, you could probably spot the years and, uh, like I have gone up the stairs before, really slow, and looked at M, tried to look at all of it, you know. Yeah. But I guess, I never really, I guess I did know the years were up there, but I never really thought about it that way. Well, and it's quite an amazing feat that David has accomplished here in the hallway, I think. And it, it's hard to really show it off with the camera. Mick kind of showed you guys a little bit of it. But man, in order to get up here, David had to set up a series of ladders. Oh, I, you're on a staircase, yeah. That's... And it, it's really tough. And he had them like wedged across and then up. And it was like building scaffolding in the hallway here. On the stairs. So, so dangerous. Oh, yeah, and this is, uh, yeah. I don't know. You, how you wouldn't want to fall yet. down these stairs. This is old fashioned no. stairs. And it's three flights of them. Yeah. Yeah. Or more. I mean, it's all, there's a landing on each side, so there's four, really, I guess. And there's like, you know, this is still 12, 14 feet above our heads up here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Up here, yeah. the skylight is really high. Yeah. And up to, he's nailing them in at the top of here, like. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 I don't even know how he really pulled it off. But. <laughs> and it, this is just a small fraction of the stuff that David has on the second floor of the building. Like, this decoration that's covered, saturating the walls completely, goes down all the way to the bottom floor. It's the entire ha hallway of the stairs. And inside, on the second floor, there's a door right there that goes into the Herb Museum. David has a huge museum. It's the largest drug war history museum in the world, next to maybe the CIA's own museum, we think, anyway. Next or the DEA or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah We yeah, have yeah, got yeah. our facts incorrect on the show before, and in fact, I forgot to bring this up on one of my shows. Maybe we should just do this quickly. Sure. Um, we had Kayla Blanford on the show recently, yep. and we thought that she was the first person arrested for possession inside a vapor lounge. Oh, oh right, But right. she wasn't because the there have been people arrested for possession inside vapor lounges before. Um, it was maybe a few here. years ago. No, not in Toronto. Oh. Yeah, at uh, the Up and Smoke, and there I think there may have been other places, but um, right, definitely yeah. Caleb was not the first, so I wanted to make that clear, uh, just as a, a little correction there. She may have been the first person arrested at the Hotbox Cafe. She was the first person arrested at the Hotbox, I do believe, but I don't want to say that even. I, I'm pretty sure that's I said true. she may have yeah, been right. the first yeah. person arrested at the Hotbox Cafe in, in the eight or ten years or whatever it is. The day Central in, says in, no. In their thing. No, okay. <coughs> <laughs> All right, well, there you go. Vapor so Central's been, got the inside yeah. uh, stope on that one. And, uh, That's right, and we I found some footage of sure people they actually know getting arrested inside other places, and there's news footage of it and stuff, so um, it's definitely... Yeah, there's been four to five arrests in eight years, Now says Vapor Central. Oh, okay, yeah, I was just looking, reading that. Now, I know you guys, you know, in, in Toronto there, the VC crew, the hash mob, if, I don't know what the weather's like in Toronto here. It's just stellar. 
You should yeah. get a bunch of MMAR people and just do a walkthrough with like bongs blazing and just take a cruise through Kensington Market to show support of the Hot Pox Cafe. Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> That'd be cool. I've been wanting to do that here for a long time. Take it like as many MMARs as I can down at uh, Maine and Hastings and just have a huge just pub fest. Just go around, I'll fill up everybody's bowl or give everyone a joint of my stash just Why say not? and light it up we're gonna do our little 420 in front of the cop shop why not yeah uh, well we should uh, pot see. tv we'll do it on the law uh, and on the rocket stick pot tv that one the that was just something i thought we should I'd, I'd love to i just need to get the logistics done yeah i know we here in vancouver this has come up recently in the uh comment section of youtube videos and stuff there's this this person who is like publishing videos saying Oh, we're smoking on our shows and we don't have medical cards. We must have some deal with the cops. And why aren't the cops down here arresting us if we're smoking? Because we're doing it illegally. This is Vancouver. Yeah, exactly. And that's this is the pot block. Yeah. This we is Mark don't... Emery's Cannabis Culture Headquarters on the pot block. They gave up on that years and years ago. Yeah. It's because the Crown won't even prosecute. He's like, no, no. And yeah. there's no complaints. They got better shit to do. That's right. And, I mean, twice a year we have a massive festival basically downtown in the center of everything open where there's sales. open sales of wide not open just sales smoking, giant clouds of pot that's being smoked but oh. but we're all actually selling retail marijuana not us people have pop-up people. tents they're out there it's funny i love this part this is i've mentioned this on the show where you're walking along and you'll hear one person going join Joints for sale, three yeah. for five bucks, whatever. And then, and as that fades off, as you keep, and all of a sudden the next person is looking, brownies, cookies, and and then, you know, and then yeah. as you, and then you hear somebody on the other want. side yelling out, we got eight corners, Kush, Baba Kush, yeah. and, you know, Rice and crispy squares. my thing, I was yelling out, it's not Kush, it's Burmese. Uh, <laughs> and because everybody had Kush, nobody yeah. had Burm. I and you know, like it was just, it's, and the cops do not even bother no. us. No, the cops actually stand we do it twice by a year. and give the thumbs up. Yeah, twice a twice year. Twice a year. Well, and then a third time, if you count the Golden Marijuana March, which does happen, the, the cops actually help us block off all the streets and help us march through the city. Uh, and they and ask us beforehand, which way do you guys want to go? You know, whatever you guys need, just let us know. We'll help you out. They're the picture of politeness and kindness to us. I've carried huge buds in my hand and had joints going in that march before and walked right by cops who did not even think to stop and say, excuse me, do you have an MMAR card? Like, they were just, they would go like this to block, to say, stay stay off the, you know, stay in the line because I'm getting over the, the, the center line into yeah. the on -creeks. No, no, can you stay right, off? Just the, to, they're, they're helping traffic. That's you know, it. It was, he, he was looking out for yeah. my safety. Yes, exactly. That's what he was well, doing. That's what he's there for. That's, what he's, that's all yeah. he's there. And that's yeah. all they're and there And in Vancouver, for. that's often how they treat us. Not always. No, they still mostly. use the drug war as selective enforcement here in Vancouver, so if they don't like well, you for like, some other reason, then like they can't Mark, catch you on that like one. Med Mark. Then they'll go after you, yeah, like Medmark or other people. Um, yeah, and they have, you know, in 15 years of not busting any dispensaries at all in the city of Vankouver, the Vancouver Police Department busted Mark Clokey, who's been on my show many times, the weed guy, um, and he, they went after him. So we're not really sure why that is or what they have on Mark, but... Uh, I don't, I don't get it. I'm not sure why they would go after him instead of... I guess they said it was based on complaints. Maybe in 15 years, nobody else has had any complaints. But I find that hard to believe. But who knows? Well, based on... I'll tell you, on complaints, it's funny you mentioned that. Um, because I ride on Beastie Ferries constantly. And more often than not, I'm always on the same ferry. Yeah. So it's the same staff, same boat. And a uh, couple of times I've had some of the staff members, you know, get on my case for smoking weed. And, but trust me, I don't have any of that. <laughs> I don't put up with that shit for one second. I turn around, I go, this is the smoking area. It says, smoking here, please use ashtrays provided. Yeah. I go, where would you have me smoke? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Well, you're not, you're not supposed to be, they all of that, and everybody's an expert on the regulations and where I can, what I can smoke and where and so on, and it's like, go fuck yourself. 
Because as far as I'm concerned, I have the right to medicate in any place people are smoking cigarettes. I'll go out of my way on BC Ferries, for instance, you've got this painted square area that paints it's a smoking area, like don't step over the line. I'll go to the edge downwind side, because okay, which way is the most the wind pro and I'll try to get the smoke to suck away. You know, I'm going out of my way. I actually had a guy walk in the smoking in the smoking area going, you know, there's kids here. Mm -hmm. and I looked at him right in the eye and I said, well, what are you bringing kids into a smoking area for, you fucktard? <laughs> there's kids in here. Like, yeah, no, because he's yeah. got his children. Yeah. He wants to go to smoke, so he brings his kids in, and there's got to be 30 people standing around smoking cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah, good. Give, you know, like, tell let, what's go what. let your kids There's stand no over on the side anybody. there and look out the railing and, uh, you know, you can keep kids. an eye on them from, it's only 10 feet for freak's sakes, you know, why do you have to have them right here in the smoking area? They shouldn't even be allowed on this side of the line. Vapor Central said, I don't know why cannabis users want to smoke in tobacco areas. We don't, but we're forced to because there's provincial laws and those laws are through um, health they're health related or something. There, there's um, they put it under Work Safe BC. That's right. it. I was trying to remember the organization. Yeah, it's right. a Work Safe BC rule now. It's not actually through anything else. So it's that whole safe working environment and such. But like I say, there is a smoking area on the ferry. Now to go one further, I'm downstairs one day rolling joints, sitting in my seat. I'm spinning up joints. And the guy comes over and he makes comments about this blah, 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 it's not right, it doesn't look good. Which basically I went, well, hey, wait a minute, excuse me, is this a scent-free zone? Because if so, all these women better go take all that perfume off immediately. <laughs> That's it. I don't want, I'm going to complain. I'll stand there and I smell anybody else on this ship. I said, I'm going to complain. I said, they can't do it. So until you make this, a, and I see it on the BC Ferries website that this is policy. That you're not allowed to use medical marijuana because if they do put that up, you know I'm calling Kirk. We got a lawsuit. Da, 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 On da, the BC da. ferries? Yeah. So they think they don't have the right to pro to do that unless they make it a smoke-free ship. Yeah. Then, then I have to conform to that rule, and I would. Well, probably not. I try to probably you know right. get a quick hoot out there yeah. somewhere, right? But uh, probably would just have to do a quick toke in a bowl yeah. instead of puffing joints in front of everybody. Yeah. I just, well, you know. I've been smoking on the BC ferries every single time I've gone on it, which is a lot because I used to live in Nanaimo on the island. Yeah. And from the time all I your was life, like all your life, basically. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, I never. Actually, it's funny because we used to smoke right outside of the captain's area, like right where the stairs come down. We would just go underneath the stairs and smoke there. And oftentimes they would come outside and we would have a conversation with them, and they'd be like, "Hey, that smells good," or whatever. And they never gave us a problem. They always. Were to us, really nice. This was before I think things really switched over to what the way it is. Twenty times, nineteen out of twenty times, the ferry worker they walk right by me and don't even look in my direction. Yeah. It's that one out of twenty guy who looks over and he's and he decides to beak off. Yeah. Right. He's got to say something. And if he wasn't wearing a brown uniform or a tan khaki uniform and a vis vest, yeah, he probably wouldn't have said anything to me if he was just not working. He never would have said boo. Yeah. So it's just, you know, it's it's this. Yeah. That's what it is. And because it disappears so fast, I mean, unless you're really looking at somebody. I'm outside on the away, ship. Right? Like, yeah. you know, it's windy. It's your hair's blowing windy. around. It's super windy out here. Yeah. You, you gotta sometimes have to watch out you don't lose your hat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's how windy it is. You really are holding onto your hat. So they, the smell of... Oh, you got it. Oh, hey, thanks, Jade. Appreciate it. Great show. When is that festival again? Which festival? I'm sorry. We're going to have to get in chat or something. Are you, giving your, you should be giving your text message number out in the on the show and people can text in and ask questions. Well, it's my phone <laughs> number, man. I'm not joking. Yeah, right. We have the I wish I had a anyway. separate text number. We have the chat for that. I need a text account. Go yeah. to Canada's Cultures account on Instagram. <laughs> That's right. There you are. Comment up there. I saw people And if you are uh, on Instagram... Speech. Uh, yeah, check it out. There's Canvas Cultures. i uh, got an account up as well as I have an account, Opus 420. Canadian Giant is in the chat there, I see. 
Canadian Giant, bravo. Hey, bravo420, good to see you here. Now, I heard that uh, he had gone through some trouble and stuff, and I kind of wanted to ask him about that as well. Bravo420? No, Canadian Giant. I think oh. maybe he was talking about it in the chat or something like that. But yeah, not non-smoking areas. Yeah, I never would smoke my paw. I would never think that I could just go into a non-smoking area and, and light up a doobie. That's just inconsiderate. It says non-smoking area. That's what it means. I might go in there and vape, but I'm not going in there to smoke. And actually... On that note, this is why vapor lounges exist, because people aren't uh, breaking the no smoking inside laws, which is part of WorkSafe BC. That's why there's nobody has a smoking section. You can't go in and say, smoking section, please, because it's, they're not, how they, got, they may outlaw it was they said that they don't want employees being subject to secondhand smoke, because technically then they might be able to have a uh, a claim, a workman's compensation claim. That's so right. basically, what it really was, it's not so much the government gives a shit about our health, it's they're covering their ass to avoid claims to make, pay to, to, to make payments on. They don't yeah. want any, anything they can cover, say, oh, we don't have to make payments because oh, of uh, stuff. No, it's very true. And, yeah, I mean, it, it does make sense in that way as well. We, if we know for a fact that smoking kills people and, you know, you have to have a job, it's kind of exploitative in a way to put people in that sort of a situation. Even though everybody makes their own decision where they want to work, sometimes you might not have a choice to even be like, shit, I got to work at a place, I got to make money, I don't want to suck smoke down all day, but what am I supposed to do? I got to make cash. So, I don't know. It's a, I see both sides of it. That's one argument for it. I think the libertarians would argue against that. But. Here's what Mr. Marius is doing today. Say hi, Mr. Marius. Hi, Mr. Marius. <laughs> Show him all the way down the stairs. <laughs> now you made him have to lift it out. got to open the second floor, right? They're moving, crew. There they are, top big strong guys. Oh. I don't know if you can see, but right over in the corner, there's a picture of me, a newspaper clipping of me on the wall over there. <laughs> I was so Can't honored when in. I was so honored when David pointed that out, and uh, he said, "Oh yeah, somebody or somebody said, oh yeah, Nick, did you know you made the wall?" I was like, "No, I didn't know." <laughs> it's actually a good shot that, that clipping. Oh well, yeah, look, I, I put the ca I put the camera that. back pretty decent. I don't know how it looked like when I was moving it around. Yeah, but. Uh, it yeah, looks good. Yeah, look, look, that's cool. Came back just fine. Yep, yep, first. So, uh, what else is going on in chat here right now? Uh, well, uh, blind pig, I tell you, man. Um, there's some. If you got, if you can bring your own work with you, there's some communities like where I live. Fort Alberni uh, is an incredible place to raise a family. Um, <laughs> but you need your own. You need your own work. It's, you know, you have to sort of have to be able to. Generate your own income or some part. There's not a lot of work there. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah, but uh, we are getting much. Uh, that's where the turnover. People are selling and getting out. And the people who are coming in are either retired, and or have some side gig where they you know, they're able to just because you can pick up a, a really nice house for under two hundred. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And taxes are still low. You know, but one of the one of the best things about where I live. Is, I gotta say, it's one of the strongest communities for community support I've ever lived in. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's really it is. Yeah, it's tight over there. That's for sure. Well, you know, it's all tight on the island, anyways. But it's true. I'm well, from Nanaimo, and it's really. I'm from Harewood. It's an hour. It's actually well, Nanaimo, and it's where Harewood is about. Harewood super tight. About an hour and forty-five minute drive from my place. Yeah. 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 Cause you're at the south end, right? South end. Yeah. 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 Down by the mill. That's right. The mill, it's funny you mentioned that. I used to, when I grew up... Did you work there? I No, I grew up on, well, you, oh, you mean Harmac? Yeah. Yeah, no, I never worked there. Uh, but we used to drive past the Harmac mill when we were high late at night. And uh, we of would course. go there... It's all what else are going to do late industrial. at night but be high? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it looks crazy because it's all these crazy lights and industrial setting. It always felt like you were somewhere weird in the industrial future. Like the orange glow. Ridley and, Scott movie yeah. or something like that or Philip Dick novel or something. It has that Terminator. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. sterile. You go get high and stare at the lights. And everything's really big. Yeah, it's all huge. Yeah. Yeah. I used to, when I grew up, 
on the I grew up on the a road called Short Avenue, and at the end of it was a mill. Yeah, I'm from Port Alberni. Port Alberni. Wine pig eyes. Port Alberni. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's with the NHL? Yeah, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I think they. We heard um. On uh, Rock 101, they were talking this morning. Uh, there was a story that basically, if they don't come to some kind of terms by, I guess, um, third week in November, it's finished because that in November is when they go into talks with the broadcast guys, right? With the TV stuff. Yeah. So they haven't got their shit by then. But they put it in a great perspective, and I forget the the, des the, the guest who was talking or the guy they were talking to, the analyst, and he was saying the real problem is better. He's the real. He, he says you got 30 teams, and only 18 of them are, are making money. He's, you know, he's, yeah. he's a serious problem. Yeah, that's or, true. He says so. It's and it's a, it's Batman's shit that he proposed. That's his little scheme. They got to dump him, and until that happens, forget it. If they don't, that's yeah, they do. his days are way. He should have been out of there a long time ago. So. Uh, I guess uh, the Bulldogs are playing amateur hockey's going, and uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's what, what people are going to go back to amateur have to be hockey, man. With that for now, I guess. Bobblehead, Batman, yeah, <laughs> Manitoba Gold, you know it, man. By default. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to take another bong rip here. Take a bong rip. I think I take a bong rip, man. I had one, it was good. And I, you got this uh, blank deck here as a table? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm using a, a skateboard today. There you go. Well, it's actually. Came, um, it's got a wall hanging on it. Oh, that's the free mark deck, yeah. Here, this oh, one. yeah, I figured I didn't have it right. Here we go. Free mark Emery uh, deck with a. You know, this is the one that was probably hanging on the wall downstairs. Like I say, it's moving day. I just snagged whatever I could to make a desk. <laughs> and you can buy those if you're a skateboarder or if you're not. Uh, or uh, even if you just. Yeah, even if you want one just for the art and hang yeah. it up and not. Not, 307 you know. West Hastings or CannabisCulture.com slash store. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Got a plug. And, yes. uh, oh, I might add, Rebecca Ambrose and uh, Mr. Cookie are watching. Hey, guys. Oh, are they doing a show today? Or and what? they are doing a show today. Oh, yeah. So, uh, however, they will be producing. Your Marijuana right. Man will not be producing this show as he usually does for Bex. Right. So, uh, uh, should open the studio and see what's going on here. Oh, we got time yet. I don't know if they're there. They it's only they're uh, just barely a quarter to four. We got 45 minutes. Did you minutes say they were there. in the chat? I'm not sure if they're in the chat. I oh, didn't see I them. See. I just was. I spoke you to Becky on. The I grapevine? spoke to Becky on the phone. I see. Okay. Yeah, actually, because Greg was off line, he said his computer was unhooked. There's Greg right there. Marijuana so man. He had me phone Rebecca and uh, there he. Is. Greg joining us here at Pod TV in the hallway. Hallway show. <laughs> Okay, here on that. Kids get out of the hallway. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're blocking the door. <laughs> yeah, we really are too. Yeah, you are. Several in doors. The, we're, we got two doors tied up here in the hallway and uh, <laughs> making everybody go the other That's way around. Why not? Yeah. Anywhere the, studios. This, this studios. We should man. call on live stream. The, the title this one the Cobbled Together <laughs> Show or the Hallway uh, yeah, the, move, right. the moving Hanging show. In the hallway, man. We cobbled it up. But we made it happen. That was it. That was the best thing. Yeah, I'm excited about the new studio. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to actually uh, have a. Well, since you know Jody's not going away anymore for the year, and uh, except to see Mark, and um, we are coming up on things like uh, Halloween. Halloween. Halloween is coming up soon. Yeah. Uh, there's Tegan. Hey, Tegan. We're doing a hallway show. Tyler. Hang on. What's up? We're turning around. Okay. Hi. You want to say hi to Pod TV? Yeah, Pod TV. Hey, how are you doing? All right, there you go. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, me too. Everybody <laughs> hopes we, we hope everybody's still. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. And I mean everybody. I mean everyone. Right now. Are we still look. Uh, not a good guy. Uh, yeah. That cat is the executive. Bud, Bud's here. I don't, yeah, let's get Bud's over there. I'll show you our executive cat. He's over there with the lovely Jody Emery. Hello. There's Bud's. He's made himself. He's not going to hang on to this chair right here. Yeah. 
So there's another thing in there, but be barefoot Jody. Barefoot Jody. Barefoot Jody. Oh, don't Jody. see that with dirty feet. Oh, yeah, yeah. I couldn't wear my heels anymore yeah. under the desk. Well, it's moving day. It's moving, moving day. day. It's moving day. I mean, that's where it goes. <laughs> Reorganization and renovation. Are we okay there? Uh, looks good so far. Uh, maybe a little bit more towards you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. And maybe up just a teeny bit, too. Yeah. Kimberly's. Up? Yeah, up. Actually, hang on. I can do that. <coughs> Nothing wrong with the hallway. There. How's that? Uh, hey, uh, I probably got it too sideways again. Or No, no, we're good. That'll work. Looks good. Yeah. We're limited with such limited space here. We moved into a smaller space than normal. <laughs> the hallway. It's true. Hey. Hello, Tippy Cat. <laughs> Tippy's here, coming over to say hello. On the front page of Cannabis Culture right now, I'm just going to share this in the chat. Go ahead. Sensible BC, I just want to continue to talk about this. For the, all those who are watching within British Columbia, we need your signatures. Yes. Please go and sign up at sensiblebc.ca. This is a BC announcement. BC British announcement. British Columbia <laughs> announcement. <laughs> if you're in British Columbia, please pay attention. Yes, go to the front page of CannabisCulture.com, read the story, Sensible BC launches referendum campaign to decriminalize marijuana in British Columbia, and follow the links in that story, and then go and check out SensibleBC.ca, that's where the links will take you. You can put your signature down, this is a pre-signature signature. This is a signature so that later you'll put your signature down on the actual thing, it's, because at the time we'll only have three months to get all the signatures. It's so they can put it into a computer program and they'll be able to quickly contact all the people they know who are already willing to sign and get that out of the way That's immediately. Right. And this is what why we're doing that pre-sign-up. It's That's an right. early sign-up to get involved. Yes. And also... Just you so that later you will sign that form and then we'll have all those signatures from every single riding across British Columbia, enough to actually change and de- prioritize the, um, the funding for police against That's it. marijuana. Basically, the cops won't come down on pot people anymore because we'll take the funding away from them. That's right. Uh, simple possession will be a non-issue. And also, one of the things is, too, they're going to have to fill out like a ton of extra paperwork for every single simple possession bus explaining why yeah. they did. Oh, yeah. So it basically they puts the cop to. on the spot. Yeah. And he's not going to want to do that. They're just going, no, 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 I don't want to do that paperwork, and yeah. that'll be the end of that. Yeah. So I'd also like to add, I believe at, at Link as well, if you want to do more than just sign the, uh, the petition as well, or the, or the referendum, that you can volunteer. So when we do come, the time comes to collect signatures in your riding as well, like by standing in front of a liquor store yeah. and just asking people when they come in, or a shopping mall, or... You know, go around to like a Boston Pizza or other establishment and even, you know, canvas these people. You may find they'll sign and even offer to do some kind of uh, event where to get people to come and sign because they can use their mascot there, you know, pizzas, munchies. They know who they're, they know who pays their bills, who's buying their stuff and calling up Domino's and Boston Pizza for delivery and whatnot. You know, like these guys. So it's always worth doing that. This is, uh, you know, it's, and once you investigate it more, you'll find out it's uh, an easy sell point because it's a uh, serious financial savings to the province. Money could be put into like education and healthcare, things that are sadly lacking now. And stop these instead of these cutbacks, we ha they have more money to put into these programs. Yeah, and that's the kind of announcements I want my government to make. That's right. Not that we're cutting back services and charging you more for it. That's, I, you know, this is all I usually hear, and I'm basically fed up. I mean, this is bullshit. So, no, it doesn't make you sense fall, to I mean, it makes, it makes sense to, you know, let's, and if you look back at the BC Marijuana Party's platforms, you know, we've put up how much money was being spent just on cannabis prohibition and how much, you know, where that, it's the savings also of the, not just the prohibition of uh, prosecuting people, but all these green teams, eradication teams, and special forces, and extra, and choppers in the air, and all this other stuff, we start scaling all of this back. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, it's true. Um, well, and think about how much money that is, just by itself. And then not only that, but of course, collecting taxes on the market itself. You know, once it's once it's there, the government's going to want it, share, it does for everything else. I'm not a big fan of taxes. Um, 
but I think you know, good. I have more support for taxes on goods than I do, say, on income tax. I don't really think they should tax people's income no. because that doesn't make any fucking sense. Why do you? Why are you de-incentivizing making an income? You, they shouldn't be taxing people on their work. On income it makes no sense. But on good, the trading of goods, I can see that a little bit more. I'm just but, cleaning this dude for a rip. Yeah. Sorry. Go on. Oh, it's all good. Yeah, no, I agree. I kind of agree that. Yeah. I think. But still, when, when no, no, I think you should tax. Income should be taxed, tax, but at a, after a certain level. Right. At higher income, higher income yeah. should pay taxes. I agree. Yeah. Um, more, they should pay. I, I, you know, I don't think that because you have a higher income that you should have more tax <laughs> shelters, which is the case now. Corporations pay no tax and get the the bulk share of. Uh, of the breaks. Well, see, it's the of corporations. The it's these large entities that aren't necessarily people that have a lot of that cash. I think. I don't know. I'm well, not really I so think sure what it is, it's like those training programs. Okay, they say it's on the it's on the premise that if we get tax breaks, we'll create jobs. Yeah. So I think it needs to go under the same program. It's like you know, some of the provincial programs, like well, they have a wage share. So this way, we see that you're actually creating the jobs to get the to get the benefit. Because you filed the paperwork, we even know which person it's going to. We hired Jeremiah Vanden there, so the government's going to pay 75, or the corporation pays 75% of your wage, the government pays 25%, and therefore that's the tax break. Right. Now we've got a job out of the corporation. Not a tax break, not just giving them a free ride on the hope that they will make jobs. And again, like many of these, um, what was the company that does the the locomotive engines that recently, the Harper, a few months ago, Stephen Harper, during the election, used it as a photo op about Canadian jobs. It was, I think, Caterpillar or something that make the big locomotive train engines. And they, uh, and then just a few months ago, they shut down the plant in Canada and the, and the conservative government refused to get involved. Really? To protect Canadian jobs. So it's like, what, you know. It was just, it's uh, because, yeah, they're pulling out of Canada. They're going to start making them in, I don't know if it was the U.S. or in South America, Central America or something. But Yeah. And I remember I, I mentioned it. It was a story I did on my show back when I was reading news, like, stories on the show and stuff. It's from way back. I don't know if it's been ever got uploaded or if it got lost. Right. Unfortunately, last week's show I do have downloaded at home in my big computer, but... Um, that was at that phone call with Shaw Cable telling me I could come pick up my flash drive. Oh. Because I was dropping, I was doing GoPro work for them. Not really, where I just was handing them some shit for free. <laughs> I wish I was doing GoPro work for those guys. Perfect. Hey, I got one of those masks. Which one? The, go back to the, okay. this one. Oh, that one, do you? Yeah. The Mexican, a, okay, well here, let's talk about that one. Um, but I also was going to But I have the, it's, mine's a motorcycle, but it's a face, like a neoprene for cold weather, but it's got the skeleton thing on the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the story that Mick's talking about, that if you want to see the photo, he's saying he has the same mask as. Um, it's a story on the front page of Pod.TV right now called Mexican President to Leave Behind Unpopular Drug War Legacy. What it is, is a video from Al Jazeera English Television. And it's got clipped out on YouTube, and it's about how Mexican President Felipe Calderon is going to leave behind a big, huge mess when he goes, which he and the United States government have perpetuated and continued to uh, foster for the entire time he's been in government, and double the amount of people. You know, basically, the drug war has exploded in Mexico. Oh, and, the, well, the and this isn't new. It's been going on for some time now. Yeah, it's been going on for a while, but it, under Calderon, it's gotten a lot worse. Oh, well, of course, and because the U.S. was involved with yeah. that. That's why, you know. You, and so this... Uh, Weren't they giving him money? The picture that Mick or, was talking about is a, a Mexican soldier wearing one of those bandanas that has the sort of whatever they call that. It's, a, it's the skull. skull it's this. It's a print uh, yeah. uh, of a skull so it'll be like your teeth and everything if you didn't have it's like a skull mask yeah but yeah. it's a lower yeah. half it's like a bandana right, i have one for my motorcycle for cold weather riding it's a uh, neoprene actually i can flip it around so i don't have to have that on the outside but yeah. it's kind of cool looking and in the video they looks like about, a death mask basically yeah, definitely that's what it looks like a it's death a mask de well and in this case that's exactly what it's intended to look like a death squad guy yeah, yeah. oh yeah he's, well, they, they're, they're, he's trying to make scary. himself look scary and badass and, and he is probably yeah he, well and in, in the video they talk about they interview a woman who was with her husband and her son 
and they got stopped at a checkpoint, a police, a Mexican military checkpoint, mm -hmm. and the, the military men just started shooting everybody, all of them, and said... And Shoot first, ask questions yeah, later. She said, what are you doing? We're civilians. And he said, no, just shoot her. She's a, she's a drug dealer. Kill them all. And they shot her. She lived. And she was just some older woman. And uh, they, her, both her husband and her son were killed. Oh, my God. Yeah. And so they just, and of course, a lot of the human rights abuse claims and stuff are not coming against necessarily the gangs. They are. The gangs the are weak. Democracy. But it's coming against the government as well. And the... The police are just as bad as the the gangs themselves executing people and doing horrible things. Oh, uh, there's no controls down there at all. Yeah. No, no, it's it's just uh, it's a free for all. Yeah, it's really turned the Mexican thing. And I, when they were talking about that a few months ago, and you know, commentaries on the story, the problems, the violence, and drug problems. And it's, it's they said this is going to break into just basic almost civil war, like just basic complete. Free, it's a free. It's a free for all. Yeah. Whoever's got the biggest, baddest guns and the most guys is going to win. That's what it's going to boil. That they're, yep. and it really and part and what it is. And they, it's they vying for that. territory. It's yeah. it's who's going to control the drug trade. Well, if you shut, the, if you took prohibition out of the equation, all that shit would go away. Yeah, it would just fall, fall you away. You can't take your uh, your your competition to court. When you're a gang, yeah, and, or or a you know, drug cartel, so, yeah, exactly. No. You can't do that. So you yeah. have to. That's why they use violence. If they got rid of their source of funding, they turned these monsters. They actually, this is their Frankenstein monster, because they brought it to life by having this illegal system in the first place and fostering, feeding it, feeding it, feeding it. Yeah. Until they threw they money into it. They, they threw shitloads of money into why this they, they monster. Want an enemy. They make an enemy all the time. They're making enemies. They design the enemies. No, it's not my phone. It's on the desk. It's the desk. Tia's afraid to come in front of the camera. Yeah. Yeah, well, they always make enemies. That's what they were doing in the Middle East as well. Osama bin Laden and all these terrorists, they were designing all these people. They've been... They always... Make an enemy. If you don't have anybody to fight, with, you gotta have a boogeyman. Yeah. See ya. Your phone was dangling. I think it was yours. The one on your desk. I moved it over there. Oh, now Tia's on cam. No, you're not. You really? It was. It was me? I didn't call you. What? No, it doesn't. Yeah. He did. He did not call you. What? No, that's from earlier. That's weird. Maybe it was your alarm. Yeah. Four o'clock. Maybe it was a four o'clock alarm. I want a car that turns on bio alarm. Him. Well, there. That's not hard. You know, you can find the uh, plans and things like that. I bet you all online to uh, run cars on biofuel, which yeah. actually. Um, just look up the cooking fuel, right? Yeah. So all you got to do is start making your own uh, hemp fuel, uh, oil type, and it would be much the same as if you were taking uh, McDonald's deep fryer grease and doing those, because I know they have that. The technology's there, and I think it's not hard to find that shit online if you oh, want yeah, If you're so mechanically inclined and, you know, how you're ready to be able to want to or have deep pockets. And speaking of, we desperately need a philanthropist to Scott a couple of mil that they've got for some uh, uh, for lawyer fees and court costs and shit like that for like some class action suits and shit, boy. I tell you, I can't. You know, if I win the lottery, the big big coin, I can't wait till they ask me, "What are you gonna do with your money?" Because <laughs> I'm gonna look real. I'm gonna look at it close to the camera, and I'm gonna look. And I'm gonna very quietly say. I'm gonna get a big team of lawyers, and I'm gonna sue the living shit out of the government. Uh, <laughs> and I'm gonna start with marijuana. Yeah. Yeah. Prohibition. Look out, motherfuckers! I'm coming to get you. <laughs> 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 Just won me 50 mil in the in the max million thing. Oh my god! That's exactly. Because it'd be the one thing they would never 
expect usually oh i'm gonna pay my mortgage you're gonna give the key to, it's always you know that kind of talk right it's the same blah 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 yeah I'm gonna go you know no 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 never mind that crap. some of these people even say oh, i'm gonna keep my job they want to stay working too you know these people like they have no vision yeah no 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 it's true i go so after the, i would just like say oh good i and and then also my couple million dollar advertising budget for like on the sides of buses anywhere I could get billboards you name it I would have like advertising campaign going on huge huge budget because yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd start a big uh, a fund and everything oh, be a, a, you know what you have a to found, do I'd put up a foundation there'd be a humongous foundation with like 30 million dollars in its bank account right away I have a great idea for a good advertising campaign you could have you know how they have those uh, big plastic things they put on the outside of buses and they do the whole side of the oh, bus. Oh, it's a wrap. It's, it's called a wrap. Yeah, it's a wrap, yeah, yes. right. Yeah. Well, you yeah. just make the bus look like a big joint. And then the bus drives around, it's this big joint. I wanted to wrap my pickup truck, and I actually called, well, the time I ended up, Jacob was in here. I talked to Jacob. Um, I don't think I spoke to Dana, but I was going to get a wrap done on my truck. Yeah. And I wanted a picture of the grow room, of my bud room. So it was going to be like, it, it, You'd have the bottom half would just be all plants, and then you'd have the big, and then the top. So from the ground up, from the bottom of the, the rocker panels up, the sides and everything would be plants, and then as you get halfway up, the rest would be the orange from the lights. Yeah. And it. then the the right, I was gonna put on the tailgate like and do the whole thing and have on the tailgate the leaf. Oh, nice. With their badge and everything, oh, so make it look like, oh, of course, we're going to get yeah, Bishop yeah. across the tailgate and then with a big bag. Me. So if a cop pulls up behind you, he sees a grow player, then it's like it's got this cop yeah, look yeah, to yeah. it, right? You know how like, they do That'll their... The shit out you know how they do their dare dragster? Yeah, right. There you go. I was going to have a pickup truck with a... That up like a... That's a great and idea. then on the side, I wanted to do I cannabis like culture. Yeah. And I was going to do like Vancouver Sea Bank. But now that I got the... I drive a luxury car with a custom bait job. I don't, you know, it's, but I mean, you have a custom paint job on your vehicle? It's not custom, but it's an option color. It costs more money. But you know what? The same token, those wraps protect the thing because they just peel right off when you want to re-get them out. You just grab them and you yard them off and you're beginning. If we could talk about that, I would still be willing to do that. And the car actually now would even be better. You're probably looking at a boat. I'm going to tell you right now, it's my car to do what we were talking about, which would look really cool. Yeah. You've been in my car. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, would cause, and we, because they can do the windows too, and I, you, you still see through them. Right. But on the outside, it looks like the whole thing. Yeah. That's that my car, cool. I can tell you right now, would cost probably about three, thirty-five hundred bucks, probably. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. At least, and probably a little bit. I'm, I'd say probably. How much is money. a bus? <laughs> oh, oh you, that's why those guys make big money. Yeah. It, but I mean, it's you know, it's advertising budget. If you can write it off. You see, I want my own bus. You could, you could. It could be like if you know, if a couple people chipped in, Bex, CC, PTV, uh, we could get sponsored. You know, and I'd love to get the leap thing on the back, like of course, because that way, like I say, when the cop pulls up by, he sees this. Your car's done up like a grow up. Yeah. You yeah. gotta have the leap badge. This is the thing he sees when he pulls up behind you. He's gotta leap say. Might not want you to have it on there. Like, well, we gotta talk to Leap yeah. about that, though, right? No, I'm sure they'd be fine. They'd be fine. I right. would make the call, and you yeah. know how I know who to call. Allison Murray. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, sure. she's our contact to Leap. That's, yeah. I bet you she'd go for it. Yeah, there's um. We know the people to get in touch with. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Allison does great well, work. Actually, Guys, Allison's a spokesperson for Leap. She's a uh, an ex um, corrections officer, and uh, in Ontario, who's got uh, I, I don't I forget the name of it. It's a technical term, but it's some type of tick that causes her extreme uh, pain in her face, and also I believe it affects her ability to walk and stuff like that. It affects her mobility. It gives her mobility issues. Really. Yeah, so I, I, I yeah, she has, sometimes it gets in her face and it just causes, and actually gives debilitating pain, like she can't deal with it, it's a, like a tick or something, you know, and it just, it's bad. That's sad. So, uh, we, as always, I wish her all the best, and uh, I did see her during the TY Expo, she was there, they had a booth um, there. Um, so, you know, I, I did see, and I think I also, oh, she was also leading the Women Against Prohibition of the Global Marijuana March yeah. this year yeah. in Toronto yeah. that we were all at there. Yeah. So she was there as well. 
and uh, yeah. yeah, so she is a, uh, a a big spokesperson for uh, for Leaf. She's one of their main spokespeople or spokespersons there in that Toronto GTA, Greater Toronto area, and uh, yeah. We and could actually, always ask to run it through there. And actually, I was just going to mention. And if not, I don't care. We could have Sensible BC on the back. Yeah, there you go. I was just thinking that's another thing we could look at. Well, and I was just going to mention that the Sensible BC campaign is having an event in Victoria on Monday, September 24, 7 and 9. And David Bratzer, who is the president of Law Enforcement Against Prohibition Canada, um, Leap Canada, David Bratzer's president, will be there in Victoria. So, David is a great guy as well. And he's a he's a police officer who is he a current police officer is he not? I thought he was, but maybe he, he maybe he's not. Wow, look at these guys! They're lugging a big couch up the stairs here. Look at these guys. Good Lord Almighty! Like I said, it's moving. Wow, we're, we're, right. we're really getting off easy, Mick. I got mine. All right. We're the biggest guy got here, the buddy. smallest thing. How do we? It all happened during the showtime. There we go. Okay, you guys can finish your show. The heavy stuff's all up there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we were just saying. Yeah. All right. Oh, look, but you got Kimberly in the shot there a little. Yeah. No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> no, when you lean forward, it was funny. I was like, oh. <laughs> How's that? Is that better? Right. Maybe a little high. Yeah. Like me. Yeah, other people who are going to be at this thing, uh, the Victoria Central BC event, are Philippe Lucas. And uh, Kirk Tubesaw is going to be there. Oh, actually, yes. Dr. I... Evan Wood of Stop the Violence BC. Yeah, I got invited uh, on a Facebook. I forget, somebody sent me the invite, which is great. And I, yeah, I don't know if I'll make it down, but uh, to see that. But. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty well on. versed in what it's all about. We're gonna broadcast it live on Pod TV. Oh, are so we? We are. are you yeah, going? Yeah, I'm going. Yeah. Cool. When is it? It's uh, September 24th, 7 to 9. Yeah. Oh, so uh, Monday. A couple weeks, two weeks from now. Yeah. I should drive down. It's not that far. No. I think I'm there on the 20th though, and I'm for a dentist appointment, and then I think it's Friday. Oh, so you'd be back. Yeah. That's a lot. Of That's why I was thinking I won't be there. Yeah. Unless I can. Uh, what time does it start? Uh, Oops, that's not right. I think it starts at seven. To, it's from seven to nine p.m. at the uh, Alex Goulden Performance Hall, nine oh seven Pandora Avenue in Victoria, British Columbia. Well, I know where that is. That's actually one block over from my old condo. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh, you lived in Victoria, right? I lived at nine thirty five Johnson Street. I was there? at nine thirty five Johnson, so one block over in that same block. Did you drive a cab there? I was a cab owner operator in Victoria right, with Victoria so. Taxi for about four years. Uh, actually, well, and then I drove for about another year and a half after I sold my taxi. Uh, yeah, I drove strictly nights. Right. Yeah. So uh, that was fun. I, I used to drive back in the 70s. I drove cab for a few years in Toronto. Uh, again, strictly nights. Back then, it wasn't. In the 70s, it wasn't dangerous. Right. At night driving in Toronto, like, you know. If anything, I used to get invited to some awesome parties and uh, didn't make a lot of money, but met a lot of cool people and yeah, made a lot of good connections. And I sold a shitload of dope out of my taxi back in the 70s. Did you really? Fucking no way. shitloads. So how did that work? People knew that you had it, so you just drive around? So. You'd just get people in the car and they would, you know, hey, can we light up a doob? And it'd be, yeah, yeah. And they would start yapping and yapping and... Some people would say, do you know? And I'd say, well, I probably could find you some. Yeah. But, you know, tell you what, let me go over to a buddy's house. I'll run in. Well, meanwhile, I'd run into my own home. Right. You know, I, but I, I was living, at the time, I lived in a rooming house. So I would just have stashes. I could just say, well, I... That's a smart way to do it. It was always... It may a, seem like it's a buddy's house. We, oh, yeah. It, we had ways. We had stashes all, you know... Here you go. And it was always, well, no, I could If anyone wanted large, it was, no, I don't even know where. I think I could find you. I thought you wanted, like, you know, a gram or, an, you know, a couple grams or something. That was what it always was. Guys, oh, no, I need a couple of an ounce. Or say, no, 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 no. Yeah. Because, well, an ounce back then was only $20, $25 anyway. 
Right. So it, it was just a way to make a couple extra bucks, plus you guy give you a nice you know, tip. We need to disconnect the internet and stuff to get this moving. Well, we're, it's just about 4:20. Oh, is it? It's 4:13. Can yeah. okay. we just leave us a little bit? I'll be. I'll. I'll, I'll shut okay. it down yeah. soon, and we just have to also let Becky get in because she's gonna do her show. So before we disconnect, otherwise she. Uh, <laughs> I will, I will give you the heads up immediately, and we'll cut it down short, okay? At 420. There you go. That was they, Jody. That, this is the last bit, because we're going to get cut off. They're going to yeah. unplug the show. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so we're just going to... They have like a little... Hey, Mandy. There's Mandy Potter. Oh, look. We'll show Mandy, but there's Bud. That's, this is Bud's favorite, favorite place to uh, hang out. That's one of Bud's favorites. <laughs> That's Bud. There's Jody. There's Mandy. Over there saying hi to Budsy in his favorite place. He likes to lounge on the stairs. You, you guys happy with the service and the facilities? All right, all right. Good stuff. There you go. More, more satisfied customers here at the Vapor Lounge, Canvas Culture. That's one of the great things I'll tell you we'll be doing downstairs is we'll be like, uh, oh, I think I mentioned that, we'll be able to bring uh, an extra mic on so if there's people in the audience that want to come up and, and join in and uh, comment like, much like at Vapor Central, I was going to make the comment before about, gee, I hate to say it, but we're catching up to Vapor Central. How the fuck did that happen? <laughs> We opposed it for so long. I'll, I'll tell you how it happened. It was because, yeah, it was getting no, us getting it through the boss lady. Yeah. It's like some we, we can only suggest, but the boss lady has to give us the final okie dokie. Right. Well, and it was kind of like the final go there for were a it, few boys. Obstacles in our way. We we did broadcast for a few yeah. times. Yeah. There's been but, logistical problems. Yeah. The our internet connection is piped into a different space. There seems to be problems with wireless in this building. Everything's made of brick. Oh, papers. It seems to kill wireless dead for some reason. Even though with our high-powered wireless. Five-minute warning. Outside of the outside of our room, it's not feasible. But we've corrected and fixed all these problems. So. Well, once we get downstairs too, we'll dedicate. It's going to be a dedicated spot, so it will yeah. eventually be like. Oh, it's gonna it's gonna be. I think I think we need one of these cameras mounted like uh, VC has on and the ceiling. The you know, a ce a ceiling. One, yeah, we need cool. one of those. We need a couple of lights permanent yeah. set up, like spotlights. The, the spot we're moving to is multi-purpose, and it's not. It's on the second floor lounge, which is at, when we just sure. had the lounge up here, taking a, a spot and dominating that for a long time would cost us money, actually, in a way and stuff. I could come over and but dedicate. But now that we have two lounges, it's not so bad. I could come dedicate a day or two days and just stay an overnighter here and do a, and you know, and just help set up. Oh, and, yeah, sure. Do, do work. We'll well, help we, you and me. We'll do some shit yeah, yeah, yeah. if you well, want. We're, we're ready to pretty much go. All we got to do is go down there and start setting stuff up. I hear you. So uh, I'm going to be working on it today. So Good. <laughs> Don't forget to get my story up. Hey, oh, if you yeah. guys, anybody who's concerned and worry, consider uh, the reason my uh, Saskatoon Harvest Cup story and photos aren't up yet is we talked to Canvas Culture editor Jeremiah Vandermeer about that one. We've been we've been working on it. Although we have to, you and I have to go through the photos. And we're going to do that right away after the show. Yeah, and, it'll, go and that's going to get so it'll get up there pretty quick because I know we promised some of that before and it's. Yeah, yeah. We're, 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 we're getting to it at the speed of stoner. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to get through. But yeah, yeah that's going up. We'll, we'll put that up today. I think, I think that's, what, 420 milliseconds every three weeks or something? I don't but know. There is definitely it? is some sort of an equation for that. Uh oh. I know, I know the number 420 is in it. <laughs> yeah. It always is. It always Wait, is. It's just about 420. 417. Yeah, That's here. what I was going to say. I got this joint roll here. Uh, I'm just going to stuff this filter in the end. Yeah. Right. We got a, we got a doobage. That's right. A we got a nice. I got a doobage. And uh, Kimberly's got a doobage. Yeah, doobage over here. Better than a duty. What's up, Barbie? Hey, Barbie. Not much. You should come around to this side, Mandy. If you want to be on camera, you have to come around and, and hunker down. Yeah, you want to bonger it? You don't want to bonger it, do you? Yeah, I do. I'm really yeah. like Yeah. Here, okay. you can take a bonger at 420 then. Lighter, lighter. Aww. I had an orange one. It might be under here somewhere. Well, it could be underneath, I babe. I'm just not saying. Oh, you're excellent. Yeah. Is that thing full? 
I like it, Smitty. Oh yeah, there's a rip in there. Okay, we're at 418. Unless, oh, that's my later right oh, there. Yeah, Mandy's got it. Okay, you, yeah. You're gonna do the 420 rip? Yeah, she's doing the 420 yeah. rip. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is that fast? Uh, yes, fast, yeah. that is. My clock's a little fast. This is it here. It's 418. Because we got the so we checked it yeah, on the iPhone. Yeah, 418 on this clock here. There you go. We're uh, we're yeah. synced in there. Let's see how many people in the chat can say hi to me. Hey, Dano. Dano's there. <laughs> hi, Pete. Golly boy, Yoda. Oh, thanks, Dano. That's what I do in my spare time. It's my day job. What's that? Painting. Oh. Huh. Like, love your art. Like, it's like summer now. All right, 419. We're going to be counting down here. Pretty sure. Well, we don't actually count down because we don't have that second clock with a. We can't give it the 10 second front. We don't, yeah, we could actually. Well, yeah, not on, your, not on yours. Hey, Manitoba Gold. No. no, it's a little bit more difficult. Yeah, we were paying attention to that. Now, I think, oh, that looks like. Uh, Rebecca's there, uh, ready. Hi, oh, Rebecca. She'll be. They'll be. Oh, so I see somebody eating there. There they are. There's Rebecca. Somebody was using chopsticks to stuff noodles in their face there at. Uh, it's the the countdown here. I guess you can't really see it from there. Let me see it. I thought for a second we were using the laptop. Um, no, we're not happening here, buddy. There you go, 420 it is. Happy 420! Happy 420! Woo Happy 420! Happy 420. Yeah. That was awesome! Yay! <laughs> Never right on, thank you. Never I loved that. it. I love it, Marius. That was Marius' transporter going off. I love it. Yeah. I think that is on his Where phone. Where was he? In the other room there? Yeah, no, it was his phone was right there on the floor. Oh, really? I'm what? afraid it's underneath the tripod. <laughs> What really? Yeah. Hilarious. That was it was he came out and grabbed it. It was sitting right there. That's so funny. Right here with us. Four twenty with all of our well fifty of our closest. Four twenty pot T V in the hallway. This is probably the first and last time you'll ever see this again. So there yeah. you go. Don't forget episode. it. No matter how many requests, we're never awesome. doing this from the hallway again. <laughs> hey, is that my water? I no, it's not. No, it isn't. No, no, no. this is my water right here. Look at that, I made it, made it through the show with no water. All right, well, Rebecca, it looks like you're ready to go, are you? Hey, Becky. Hi, Becky. Is she ready? Get your bowls. Is that you, Becky? Does she have get your bowls packed. Get your bowls packed. Did Becky get extensions? I don't know. Where? Her hair? No, I don't think she did. She just let me grow. But well, that was cool. so that was a fun show, Mick. That was fun, and I hope you guys enjoyed it out there. Um, Friday, Jeremiah Vandermeer's got uh, CCN News, and it'll be coming to you from the brand new Pot TV Studios on the second floor here at Mark Emery's Cannabis Culture Headquarters. Yay. That's right, and we have Mason Tavert of the Colorado <laughs> Campaign to Legalize Pot. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Mason will be talking about the ballot initiative in Colorado. Is he phoning in? Uh, yeah, we could Or Skype him in or something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. He's not here. No, yeah. <laughs> we'll do a Skype thing if we can manage to uh, in our new studio. Friday. All Good right. Day. And when, before that, Wednesday with Marijuana Man from yep. Under the Influence. Marijuana Man from Under the Influence, I'm sure, is looking forward to the, uh, the new configuration. That's right. I'm not sure. Uh, he'll probably still be broadcasting from his desk. I'm not actually sure how we're going to well, do I'm not sure either. I do know that uh, we uh, do yeah. have another piece of equipment now at Pod TV. We've invested in, uh, well, I think actually Marijuana Man invested in it. I don't know. He said he hadn't submitted the that receipt microphone? yet. Yeah, that he's going to yeah. keep the, a nice four-track mixing mic for a you know, high-tech thing that actually, yeah. so when we do live, uh, concerts and things like that will be able to give you really good sound quality in the future uh, through the computer now. Cool. Yeah, so hopefully you know, it'll work. I've often spoke about how we're slowly investing in more and more equipment, and you know, getting, yeah, getting different things. Well, it's you know, <laughs> it's the low budget pot TV. The, the no, the no, no budget. budget. That's right. The no budget pot TV. We do what we can. All right, but not much. Thanks for tuning in. I see Becky's there.
And, uh, hey, until uh, next time, I'll be coming back to you for the new studio next week. Cultivate your freedom. Grow pot. Okay. So, uh, what do I do here? Restart? That's good. Are you sure? To yeah. get Becky on? Oh, no, to get Becky on? Yeah. Becky's got a queue up here. Okay. So, queue her up. And then, yeah, she should be ready to go. Vancouver C Bank. I should stop the recording and start again? Um, You can just do that afterwards. Or, yeah, it doesn't really matter. You, you can do it now. Okay, there you go. Peace.